Well, hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we are going to continue on with the refurb of the Elmer Grav engraving machine. So if you saw my last week's video you'll see we took it from how it arrived, stripped it down, started to make some you know, clean up, some, some preparation, some really getting rid of rust and things like that, some straightening out of shafts and various other bits and pieces so in this week's video we, we've got the base done already we've got the bottom end done we're now moving up onto the top end which is the machine table itself and all of the bearing supports and rails that that runs on and then the very top end with the motor and everything else on it so there's quite a bit of work still to go on this I'll probably try and just show the, the highlights of this, otherwise if I show every little bit, you know, there'll be 10 episodes in this series, which will be far too many. So, hoping in this video to show the remainder of the rebuild, hopefully a bit of machining where we need to do a bit of machining here and there, the remainder of the kind of refurb and clean up, and I'll just show you the kind of items before, items after. It's, you know, you don't want to watch me cleaning things down bit by bit with I'm largely just using WD-40 and um, methylated spirits, you know, denatured alcohol, that kind of thing. And just generally giving everything a really good clean, oil up, putting it back together. It is in really good condition once I get under the book. So we'll crack on with that and I'll bring you back in at the bench as we start on the very next bit in that process. So just as a very quick reminder before we crack on, I've moved the bits that I've done back over on top of the tool chest just to clear some space on the bench. So we've got all of the bottom end done, we've got the column done at the back, that's all nice and cleaned up and we've got these bottom two units put back on with the rack at the back for adjustment for the bottom section. Uh, so yeah, that's all done, we've got these rails cleaned up for the x-axis and we're now going to move to the bench and start looking at the bits that sit on top of these rails that support the actual table that has the the workpiece on it so that was just as a quick reminder so I'll join you at the bench just shortly okay guys please excuse the mess that is my bench I've got bits of stuff all over the place but largely we're going to focus in on this bit next so this is the bit that sits on those two rails that you've just seen so those rails that you've just seen on the base work on these two bearings well these four bearings you know each side here so that's the x-axis and then on top of that you can see the y-axis that runs on these two rails in here. So we're going to split this down and I've already done the work I need to do so this should just hopefully or maybe not oh no I need to take this this holder off inside but once I've dropped this off this is the the piece that holds the ball joint so we'll take that off and then I should just be able to take the the y-axis piece straight off the end allow me to focus on the x-axis so I'll bring you back when I've done that and we're cleaning up this bit okay so we've just removed that piece so this is where the top of the ball goes for the stylus so this is largely the magic of the whole device really this is where it all happens in that ball joint so we've just taken that off which should now allow me to hopefully run that right off the end yeah there we go so that's the that's the y-axis on top of that sits the actual machine table and this is the x-axis bit so yeah just aluminium interesting machine from solid by the looks of it so this framework looks like it's been machined as opposed to cast all over by the looks of it it may have been a casting actually yeah there is it's a machined casting so yeah it's been machined where it needs to be machined by the looks of it so and then the two rails fitted and obviously we've got the bearings fitted through not sure what we're doing with these bearings yet where they are we're going to give them a clean up they all feel pretty good none of them are grumbling or uh, you know making horrible noises or feeling horrible so they should be should be okay to go back on as they are largely so I will set about cleaning this bit up and bring you back once we've got that done. So we've got the worst of the clag off 
this bit we've got a bit more cleaning up to do yet around where the bearings are and also around where the screws that hold the bearing in place are I need to get into there just to clean just to worsen them up really off we've done the rails like we did with the other ones with some super fine scotch bright all look good there's no damage and interestingly I just took one of the bearings off to have a look at it in a bit more detail and I was thinking if these are all pinned and screwed these rails are all pinned and screwed there's no adjustment there has to be some kind of adjustment on these to set these bearings up so that they run on the rails so I'll just try and zoom you in a little bit more and I think I've found it I'm not sure if this is going to show up but if you look at that screw for that bearing hopefully you can see it's on an eccentric it's been yeah you know, the thread the, the actual bearing location diameter is eccentric to the rest of it so that's the adjustment so I now know when I put these back together I've got adjustment on these which is going to be and some of them were touching and some weren't so they do need adjusting and also what I've found is the bearing itself that I took off had a almost a line I thought it was a groove in the outer race but it was just a line of really ingrained muck really on that OD so again that's just had a very fine scotch bright on it to clean that up and that looks that looks fine it feels fine so what I'm going to do for now is reassemble these you know I'm going to have to do that with all of them to clean them up because they've all got this line of muck on them so we're going to have to have them all off one at a time clean around them make sure the shafts are clean put them back together and then we will do the final oh I missed a bit there's a tiny washer that goes on sorry excuse my arm there we go the bearing rides on that washer like that and that feels absolutely fine so I think they're all going to be good so they all need to come off all be cleaned up in the same way as that one so that's quite a lot of work so you obviously don't want to watch me do that so I will crack on with this and bring you back when we've got them all back to this stage I'm not going to change any of the adjusters at this point I'm just going to get them cleaned up and put back on and then we will look to do the adjustment at the end when we start building it all back together alright we've cleaned up this I don't know what the proper word is but we'll call it a shuttle kind of works in my mind so we've taken all the bearings off one by one cleaned everything up put them all back on cleaned the rails up so good enough state for that to go back on there's good news and bad news the good news is all of the bearings are really good so don't need to try and replace any so hopefully that is consistent with all the other bearings that so there's eight on here there's another eight on this bit yet to do and then there are an, another eight bearings on these keepers that kind of go underneath if you like to hold everything to stop it lifting off the rails so that's the good news the bad news is in my eagerness to do this when I've taken them apart to clean the bearings up I didn't realize that the cam I showed the cam earlier on these bolts well I thought they were kind of I don't know what made me think that but I thought they were fixed into place kind of because they were quite tight in the here the first one was the rest of them weren't they just dropped out so I've lost all the positioning of where those cams actually were so I've now got to set this up as though it was a brand new machine and I've got no idea how they do it so that's going to be interesting so we're going to be making this up as we go along so I've widened these bearings out to their widest point this way on the width and we've got the, the unit sliding up and down on the rail 
Now as I slide that up and down I've got various bearings in contact in various different places which is what I'd expect because they're all moved and I've also got some rotational play which I'd expect because I've backed all the bearings off to their outer limits if you like so the first thing I'm going to do is focus in on these inner bearings and get all four of those in contact with the two rails this way for a start and then I'm going to use a square best way I can think of doing it and come off the rail itself the front rail and set the square up best I can across this rail to set this rotational movement to get it as square as possible so that then these two rails are as square as possible to these two rails. I mean at the end of the day this is an engraving machine so I don't think it's that critical if I'm honest but while I've got it in bits I might as well try and get it set up as best I can and that's the best way I can think of doing it. So I will have a bit of a play with that and I'll bring you back when I've got it a bit further on than it is just now. So what we've been doing here guys and there's not many of these left in the world but if somebody else has got one of these and is doing what I'm doing what I've found is you back all of the these four bearings well you back two of the bearings off at equal corners so you have this one in contact and this one in contact with the rail so only two are spinning and then what you do or I say what you do this isn't a tutorial this is just what I've figured out I'm using a parallel across the bars and a depth mic and I'm depth micing down to the rail this oh, you can't really see what I'm doing sorry I'll move my hand so I've got a depth mic there down to the X rail and you'll see it better at the front side and same thing this side depth micing off that parallel down to that X rail until you've got the same reading this corner and this corner and then what I've done is then jacked the opposite corners this corner and this corner down until all four bearings are in contact and then there's a final bit of tweaking on all four corners to get that right and that's what we've done there so and I've backed off these other bearings that they're just about touching but not quite so that's how I've done it to set the height so I know that the table surface now that goes on here or sorry the next one that goes on top of here is parallel to these rails this way and you know across all planes so that's about as good as I think I'm going to get that so the next task so I've got all four bearings in contact there now and that's running nicely so the next task I'm going to do is set up I don't know a one two three block or something a ground block here with a parallel clamp to it at 90 degrees and I'm going to use that to set 90 degrees across this rail to these two rails to make sure that this is perpendicular to these rails and then I'm going to jack the four bottom bearings in until I get that perpendicularity right and I've got all four bearings touching at that point I, I then should be level in all planes or in both planes and square based on setting that up this is quite a challenge but I'm enjoying it so I will bring you back when I've got that done and we're then moving on to do exactly the same with this one but in the opposite directions but I think I've got a method sorted now on how to do this so I'll bring you back when I've done all of that but I thought I would just explain the method that I've found to do this and I think that's for an engraving machine at the end of the day that should be more than good enough you know, this isn't this isn't a nuclear reactor after all so I'll bring you back when I get to that point thought I'd just show the perpendicularity or squareness check so I've got a 1-2-3 block with a parallel clamp to it not absolutely ideal but 
what I've done is I've used that to set up against this rail as best I can to get the squareness right between the X rails and the Y rails. So that's how we've done it. Okay, as I said before, I'll bring you back when I've done all of that again with the Y axis. Right guys, we've got our top table back on. We've got our articulating stylus rod back on. And I've got a DTI on the top. There's two pads on this top plate that support the table. So I'm just going to move you up and show you the readings I've got on the DTI. So here's my setup. You can see I've got my clock, it's in the sort of free space, the wasted space in the middle here where the pads aren't. It's just about touching at that point, which I'm not bothered about what the readings are on there. I'm only bothered about the readings on the flat pads. So I'll just zoom you in a bit on the clock so you can see the setup. So we're basically going to move onto the pad on the left, the pad on the right, and tram as far as I can across this way. I can't get all the way across, but I can get, you know, way over halfway across. So I'll just bring you in on the clock. So hopefully you can see that and it's not blowing out. So I'm going to drive this holding the top with a small bit of weight pressure on to simulate the pressure of the table on. I'm not pressing on hard. We'll move over to this left hand side and you can see there we're about on the zero point and if I traverse backwards and forwards as far as I can go we've got about I don't know, half a thou maybe, if that. And then if I go over to the opposite side, yeah, we just, we're about two and a half, two and a half thou different. And that's, you know, I've got all 16 bearings in contact with both rails on this. While I'm doing this, and that's about as good as I can get it after a lot of time. And believe me, getting all 16 bearings in contact the whole time across the full range and tweaking 16 different bearings to get <laughs> to get that somewhere near where it is is quite a challenge, and I'm sure. The guys in the factory would have had different ways of doing this, setting it up with blocks and special gauges and things like that. I don't have that, so this is the best I can do. At the end of the day, this is an engraving machine. A couple of thou on an engraving machine, I think, over you know, over a four inch range left to right and probably similar front to back, I think that's more than good enough for an engraving machine. <laughs> We're yet to find out, but I can't imagine a couple of thou being too detrimental so I'm happy with that that has took a significant amount of time to get that set up we're talking I don't know three or four hours worth of work to get back to that point to get both tables on squared up lined up all bearings in contact and that kind of accuracy across the table support surface so happy with that we'll move on to the next stage which I've got two choices now. I can either go for the the table piece that sits on top of here next, which is probably what I'm going to do, or we could attack the the actual head unit that sits at the back that holds the spindle. But I think I'm going to go for the the table piece that sits on here next. So we'll we'll have a look at that bit. So here's the next bit. So this is the table support, and you can see there the dovetail. For the x-axis for the table movement in that particular rail you can see there's a brass gib strip on one side and the engineering on this is absolutely it's micro and micro fine engineering and very impressive i don't even think the camera will show it up and i can't see on the viewfinder but there's one two three four there's five tiny little grub screws there pressing on that gib strip for independent adjustment of that in the x-axis which you know for a machine of this size and for an engraving machine 
I just think that's a you know you can that's why this is German. <laughs> you can just tell the quality, the state of this, you know this surface and and the V's look pretty good. Just need a clean to get rid of the muck and pretty much the same for the rest of it. And if I turn it over, probably going to lose all the screws. And I've lost one of them. Um, that's the inside surface, and that's what sits on top of the platform that you've just seen me inspect. So again, very clean, just needs a bit of a clean up. There's no rust on it. We'll give it a clean up and and give it a bit of lubrication and then we'll fit that together. So yeah, not much to do to this other than a bit of cosmetic work really. So I'll not show any of that. It's just gonna be wiping down, cleaning, and I'll bring you back when we're when we're done. Right, we've got our top piece back on now. What I've done is I've got all the rest of the bearings on that sit underneath so they're all done and fitted and we've made some adjustments to this piece that they call a card and holder in the manual and I'm not really this has got some adjustment on it there's like a collar here that's got some slots in it and this collar kind of slides up and down and there's some graduations on the collar I as yet don't know what that does need to try and figure that out from the manual but all of the sort of grub screws that hold this articulating piece under here I've adjusted all of those so we've taken all of the play out completely but there's there's no friction or resistance and so I've got that set on the maximum setting at the minute for movement and you can see there got some really nice movement and I can't feel any knocking clunking where there might be any backlash or you know play or slack in that so that's really nice that is really nice now so that's that bit complete so we're now going to move on to the table the actual machine table itself so I'll just show you that before we start so here's the machine table itself you can see the rust that we're going to be dealing with on this bit. Um, it's got a couple of T-nuts in. One of them was moving, which is this one. So that's come out okay. The other one was tight, but I've just managed to give it a couple of taps and that's come out okay. So the next job now is to split the X-axis from the Y-axis. So on the underside of this, we've got the the mating part that mates with the top of the machine bit that you've just looked at so we're going to split that apart so I've got the two axes separate and then start the clean up not too bad on the underside obviously but I think this as I said before this thing's been out in the rain at some point or the damp so the top sides quite quite bad and again I don't know what level of work we're going to need to get down to a decent table. I'm hoping just scotch bright, which, you know, had a very quick look. I think, yeah, I think that's probably going to clean up fairly well without too much effort, luckily, looking at that. So I will bring you back when we've done some work to this. And then once we've got it reassembled, I've got the two handles. So this one's all bent and this one's broken so we need to do something with that so a bit of machining to do some kind of work we'll figure that out later so I'll bring you back as I said when we when we've done something with this to clean it up all right guys we've got our XY table refitted to the machine and all now very nice I've taken as much backlash out of both axes as I can so that's all very nice and it's cleaned up very nicely. Just zoom you in. So you can see there how well that's come up and again just manual handwork on that has got me to that state and I'm more than happy with that. There's a couple of apprentice marks, there's a, a, a letter and or ampersand, there's a couple of numbers that are faintly in the bed at some point where somebody's had a bit of a practice but nothing 
too much to worry about. I've had an oil stone over it so I know it's all nice and flat. And the final thing to say, we'll just zoom back out, is I honestly can't believe how I, I can't even describe what this feels like because I'm kind of lost for words. <laughs> it's I don't know. It's just so it's just quality. It really now I've got everything all the bearings running nice and everything cleaned up. The the feeling of that is yeah, it's undescribable really. It's almost like the best way I can describe it if anybody's ever pushed a like a robot arm or something like that round that's got servo motors on it and that bit of resistance you get from the servos but very very smooth motion it's kind of got that feel about it and I've taken all the I've adjusted it so there's no knocking in either axis no backlash yeah really really pleased with that so on with the next which is the head unit so we're now going to start attacking the very last piece of the assembly. So some clean up to do, some electrical stuff to do and some working out to do. You know there's some springs that should be attached that aren't attached. There's some adjustment wheels on the top of this thing that this adjustment wheel here, I don't know if you can see it, I'll zoom in a bit. I don't know if you can see how bent that is as I'm moving it. It's obviously been, I mean that's terrible, it's obviously been banged or knocked. So that's all bent. So, you know, I don't know what this adjustment does yet. Not figured that one out. So I need to look at that. Just some general clean up. Light to sort out what we're going to do with the light. So, and we'll leave that I think for the final episode. Otherwise this one's going to go on far too long. So we'll just close this episode out now and we'll be bringing you back in part three well there we go guys that's the end of part two apologies i couldn't squash this into two episodes i, I really wanted to not go on much more than that for such a small machine but i'm doing this almost live so i'm doing this week by week so what you're seeing on a sunday is what i've produced the week leading up to that so i'm slightly bound time wise obviously with work and everything else as I've discussed before so they're coming thick and fast as I'm doing them I'm hoping that by next week we'll have it all complete all back together during next week's episode and we'll be doing some kind of a test and a trial on it so we will be bringing you back to show you that very shortly so thank you all very much for watching and subscribing as usual and thank you to the new subscribers that have come along to the channel and we'll catch you all next week on part three, which will hopefully be the final part of the engraver refurb.